Okay. I put it back in just so you guys can see it. So now we're gonna talk about the cooling in terms of the engine. The reason why I talk about both is we could remove the parts, but if you put the engine back together and there's an issue going on, if you know how things work, then you can better diagnose it. That's just my opinion. So now we're gonna talk about the water flow and removing and I put this guy back in and I put only this guy back in and this one in. Just so you can see what's going on. Man, I gotta catch my breath. So anyways, here's a water pump. Um um so um as i've covered before i'm sure i'm pretty sure i've covered before this engine um it doesn't have antifreeze it grabs the water from the lake but at the same time it expels the water so this is the way it typically flows right so this is the water pump it pushes the water into the block and it goes around the water jackets now i'm going to be covering more a little bit let me see if the video another video but anyway so this is the water pump the water goes in goes up the heads then comes out through a port right here in the heads and right here it has a decision the water has a decision either it can go back into the engine in which case it warms it up even harder or it can exit the boat exit the engine i'm sorry so it would exit right here so right here it's hot water here's a thermostat here's cold water just like an engine block like um when you barely start up the motor in the morning, the thermostat keeps the water inside and it just keeps recirculating. So what happens is the pump pumps the water inside the block, goes up the heads, comes out the heads, comes out a port right here, and then it goes back in and then go back in. So it just keeps going round and round. It keeps getting warmer and warmer. But once the engine is hot, the engine actually needs cold water. So it grabs the cool water from here, which we removed it right now, but I put it back in just so you can see it. So typically what people see, what you see online is People put a garden hose right here. And so water's flowing in there in that way. Not only water, but it's actually cold water. It's flowing towards inside of the engine. Now, so whatever, obviously there's a limit to how much water can go inside of the engine. So, so it has to exit. So cold water goes in and hot water comes out. So the hot water goes here, travels here, goes inside the engine exhaust manifold, then comes up here. So if you actually touch this water right here, which we covered in the previous video, it's hot. So that's how the engine cools the hell self down. And this is made out of cast iron. So this water right here that does not have antifreeze, it's not gonna do anything to it. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show more video. So I'm gonna pause on this just because I'm gonna remove the intake exhaust and also this valve. So if you see people online, you know, so this is a good trick, you know, remove it from the back and then put a water garden hose. That's how you can start the engine and not worry about having a radiator or nothing like that. And you can start it outside. And it's very easy. Now, another thing is, let me see that I covered. Actually, first let me pause this. Let me remove the, the how do you call it, the, the intake exhaust manifold, and then we'll cover more. Okay, thank you. Okay, now this is a continuation of it. So again, we're going to remove the water pump. Um, I think we're ready to cover this one, but if the gauge does not work, you know, here's the thermostat housing. But if in case the water temperature does not know, you can actually put. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put an analog gauge, a direct thread gauge right there. There's going to be a gauge that's going to be telling us the water temperature. Only because we don't have all the gauges from the boat. And so either we could take out no gauges, which would be a pain, or we could just remove this and put a analog gauge and directly measure the temperature. It's the same thing going to be for the pressure side, for the oil pressure. So anyways, um, we're going to remove the water pump. And to remove the water pump, first we've got to remove these four screws right here. Because it just simplifies stuff. You could remove it without it, but... No, actually you can't. Because you're going to be able to remove three screws, but there's one that's going to be way tucked in. So you have to remove this right here. Okay, so it's four bolts. Okay, never mind the background music, not background noise. So there you can see the four bolts. One, two, hopefully I'll be able to filter it out. Okay. Okay. Sit here. Ok, 
Okay. Now here's the actual, here's the actual, um, how do you call it? The actual water pump. Now to remove it, it's those four bolts right there. So to remove the water pump, um, we got to remove those four bolts. So here we go. Hello. So I'm going to, I'm going to help on my, we're going to move four bolts. So I know we're cheating in that we already took it off, but again, this is just to speed things up. There we go. Okay, so not that it needs explanation, but two of the bolts are bigger and the other one is smaller, you know. So the two go on the outside. So, get the back. There you go. So these go in here. I know I mentioned this before, but it's another thing. I've I've actually removed water pumps from cars, and this just seems a lot more heavier. And it has to be because it is cast iron. Um, it is just way heavier, and I, it has to be because of the marine. And it's for marine purposes, you know. So normal circumstances, this is rust. This is rusted, right? But normal circumstances because of the antifreeze. So the antifreeze does two, three purposes, right? One is it lubricates. The other is it uh, stops uh, the water from freezing, from actually becoming ice. And the final thing is a lubricate. I can't remember at the top of my head, but there's three purposes for antifreeze, right? So this is rusted. So obviously because it doesn't, there's no antifreeze, you know. But if it were a car, I would be a little bit concerned. But because it's a boat, I'm not. You know, and everything is just that heavy. I think I, I know that water pumps are cast iron but i've also seen them aluminum pumps especially on the newer cars but this is still cast iron so i'm guessing it was done on purpose that it's a new engine in fact that might be one of the reasons i just made a breakthrough maybe so anyways um yeah so this is heavy so now let's talk about this so this is a thermostat housing and so to remove that so this tells you the water temperature again this doesn't have a computer. This doesn't have an ECU. So this is all mechanical type. So this is just goes to the gauge. This is an analog signal that goes to the gauge. So to remove this, it's just two bolts. It's one right here and one in the bottom here. So you hold the bolt. Let me see. So I'm removing this guy right here. And it's going to expose some interesting stuff. So there's one. There's the other one. Damn. This thing's heavy like uh, like everything else. Okay. So this is kind of what I wanted to explain. Let me see. This right here. So the water. Ah. We gotta do this quickly. I don't have that much time. Okay. So the water actually flows through the water pump. It flows inside. These are the water jackets, right? And as you can tell, you can tell these things right here. Now these made are if you call it, if you if you if you notice there's a special color. So what are those purpose for? As I, in fact it's even more important in terms of a bow. So these are made out of brass. So they won't rust. Again, even cars have a metal brass. So that really doesn't matter, but there's no antifreeze, so it can rust, right? And so, um, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to remember what the three purposes are. I know it's lubrication. It, oh, and it prohibits rust. And it stops water from freezing. That's the three things for any reason. So anyways, um, so if there's no, if it's on winter and you forgot to winterize your boat, then the water that's inside of it is going to become ice. And if these things are not here, they, they're actually made to sacrifice. So as soon as the water becomes ice, the, stop, the block starts, the water starts freezing and it pops these things out. So that's what these things are. And if you notice, it follows the water jacket right there. So if you could follow it along, you would actually run into those things right there. I don't know if you can see it right there. 
Maybe if I turn on the light. Mm, no, you can barely see it. It's like, no, you can't. Anyways, so anyways, so how is it that the water flows? The water actually flows through there. It goes through the water jackets, but then there's channels inside in between the blocks. So if in case, if in case you don't know, the block is from right here all the way up to here. The heads is from right here all the way up to here. This would be the covers, the cover, the valve cover. So it's not exactly part of the heads, but still. So anyways, so how is it that the water flows? The water flows inside of there, goes through the water jackets, but then there's some holes in between the heads and the block where the water actually goes up and then it cools. So in the process, it's cooling the block, but at the same time, when it goes up, it's also cooling the heads. Now, the water that flows in, it must come. Sorry, the, the, the memory ran out. So anyways. So the water flows inside and goes through the water jackets. These freeze plugs are so that in case that you forget to winterize in, as you can tell, there's another freeze plug right here. And that one is not a freeze plug. That one is actually for the camshaft. And so they're actually that color because of the water, like I said. So anyways, the, the water pump pushes the water in there. It goes through the water jackets. Then there's some holes in between the heads and the block and the water flows up. And once it flows up, it has to go somewhere so that somewhere is right here so the water just keeps flowing so that's how the water pump works the water system inside of it it just keeps going round and round so the question is well i don't think i covered this but why why would you want that why not just how can i put this when you turn on the car so the way that the motor works is when you turn on the motor in the morning the thermostat is closed and so what happens is it's a closed loop the water just keeps circling round and round but in the process of course if you think about it, it just keeps getting warmer and warmer and hotter and hotter and there's a reason why and the reason is because these motors are efficient at a certain temperature turns out the engine can't be cool it has to actually has to be hot for it to be running efficiently and get the most miles per gallon, pollute the less, etc., etc. So whenever you turn on in the morning the cars, the engine is cool, it's cold, it actually pollutes the most. And so what you want to do is you want to heat up the engine as much as much as possible and as fast as possible. That's the, the key thing, as fast as possible. So that's the purpose of the thermostat. It warms up the water, but once it warms up the water, the, the temperature is just going to keep rising and rising and rising, and you don't want that. So eventually you want to, like, Okay, it keeps going up. You don't want it to go all the way up. You kind of want it to stay on one level. And so after a certain point, that's when the thermostat starts opening and starts grabbing the water from the river, lake, or whatever, and it starts feeding into cold water, and it starts exiting the hot water, which would be through the channel that we covered right now that is through the exhaust slash intake manifold. And so um, that's how this works. So that mystifies some of the thing from the water. Um, like I said, the water, um, these freeze plus, just make sure to put them on, 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 these start leaking water, so that's a common thing. So make sure when you're doing the overhaul to put some gasket sealants on them, or ask the machine shop to put them on. Most of the time, they're pretty cool about it, and they'll put them on. And so I will be creating another video in terms of showing those, those holes, those tunnels from the bottom to the top. That way can people understand what it is that I'm talking about. And so, um, yeah, so now... Now, what's the next video? Let me see if we remove that. Should we remove the... I don't know. That's a good question. So I'm going to see what the next video is about. Thank you and bye.